1997-98 has been an incredible season for the Air Scottish Eagles as Scotland's only top flight ice hockey team claimed the treble of Benson and Hedges Cup, Express Cup and the Super League title in only their second season of existence. The fans here in Centrum have seen some incredible hockey over the past few months and we're going to take a look back at some of the highlights now. We pick up the action with the Benson and Hedges Cup as the Nottingham Panthers visit Centrum in the quarter-final first leg. This Benson and Hedges match was the first of a back-to-back -back home double-header with Nottingham. The following night, the sides would clash again in the Super League. Eagles failed to get the start they were looking for, though, as Nienhus won the face-off and Derek Laxtell cracked that one past Rob Dobson in the second minute. Dobham not happy with that one. But before the period was over, Mark Wolfe stole the puck in his own zone. Skated away to feed Mark Montanari. And he beat Trevor Robbins at the second attempt. The crowd liked that one. And so did the players. Another look at it. Perfect pass. And the alert Montanari making it one all. Into the second period, another great Eagles move. Saint Pierre's pass splitting the Panthers' defence, and Carrie Biet's finish was clinical as Eagles went ahead. Brilliant hockey this. Carrie shrugging off Craig Nienhuis' challenge and deceiving Robbins with a low backhand shot. It was a good period by Eagles and they made it 3-1 before the second break. Scott Young broke out the Panthers' move, found Matt Hoffman and again the passing was excellent as Dennis Purdy was picked out on the blue line. Another disaster for Robbins and more joy for the Eagles fans. This trademark wrist shot from Jamie Leach early in the third brought Panthers back to 3-2. No chance for Dobson with that one. But 10 minutes from the end, the goal of the night by Eagles secured the 4-2 win. Look at Mark Montanari here. He picked it up from Scott Young behind his own goal. And look at the speed as he flies down the right wing. Beats two defencemen and cuts into the forehand. Robbins got wood on the first shot, but no chance with the rebound. 4-2 Eagles. Every reason for Montanari to be satisfied with that one and that's the kind of form that made him Eagles top scorer over the course of the season. Four two in the night, the second leg would see Eagles win by 4-3 in Nottingham to claim their place in the Benson and Hedges Cup semi-finals. Next night in Centrum saw Panthers return, this time on Super League business, in a match which was very close for a while, with Eagles pulling away in the end. Matt Hoffman got his side off to a flyer with this one after just 24 seconds. And Jeff Hode got the next against his old club, turning home on the pass from Sam Grillo. Panthers came back strongly though, and as the home defence struggled to clear their lines, Black still eventually turned it home for 2-1 at the first break. Early in the second, Greg Haddon gets the touch close in to turn Craig Nienhuis' shot past Doba, and all of a sudden, it was all square. But look at Jamie Steer here. Two defensemen try to put him through the boards. But he still comes out from behind to make it 3-2, catching Scott O'Connor at the wrong post. Panther's not done yet, though. 
Paul Eddy scoring this one on the power play to make it 3 each, just 26 seconds into the third period. But that was to be Panthers' last counter of the night. Mark Montanari picks up Dino Bauba's rebound here to make it 4-3. Dennis Purdy then deflects Scott Young's shot home. A power play goal to put Air 5-3 up with seven minutes left. Nottingham sensing a second defeat in as many days. The frustration showing through. Graham Waghorn has a go at Carey Biet. Center ice and Carey pulls the old sweater over the head trick to win this one on points. O'Connor was pulled in a final throw of the dice by Mike Blaisdell, but the ultimate price was paid. Jamie Steer with the empty net goal six seconds from time. Eagles win 6-3 and complete a miserable weekend for the Panthers. After the B&H second leg in Nottingham and an overtime loss in Manchester in the league, Eagles next entertained Basingstoke in a match which was much closer than most people expected. Incredibly, every goal came in the first five minutes. The first came from Mark Wolfe after build-up from Bauba and Montanari. It was 2-0 at 4.45 when Carrie Biet produced a great burst of speed to take him in on Sonny McNacker for 2-0 but straight from the face-off. Eagles were caught cold. Only 10 seconds elapsed before Jamie Black was picked out on the blue line, and he found the top corner. 4.55 on the clock, that's the end of the scoring, but not the action. Montanari was later thrown out of the game and this battle between Matt Hoffman and Greg Gatto gave the crowd plenty to keep them warm. Eagles recorded a 3-2 Super League win in Newcastle and then came out of Manchester with a four-all draw in their B&H Cup semi-final first leg. Into the second, Eagles took the lead inside five minutes. Jeff Hode latching onto that slack clearance to blast that one home. That one had the crowd on their feet. But the home fans were silenced in the 16th minute when Mike Morin fired this one into the roof of Dobson's net. Before the period was over, though, Jeff Hode showed how he always has the appetite for the big games. Look at the way he rolls off Wicklander's hit, feeds Steer and skates on to receive the pass. The perfect finish from the man who wrecked Eagles' season just a few months before. From another angle, you can see the perfect contact. No chance for Jim Rivnack. And again from inside the goal, tremendous shot. Eagles 2-1 up at the first break. Into the second, and great determination here by Mark Wolf set up the chance for Mark Montanari. No second opportunity needed. 3-1. In replay, Rivnack thought he had the shot. But wishful thinking. Bicklander made it 3-2 before the second break, and that one gave the Storm fans some hope. But an empty net goal by Dennis Purdy, eight seconds from time, wrapped it up for air, and those fanatical supporters were already thinking about their second visit to the cup final. Eagles were through, but could they go one better this time around? It was back to the Super League for Eagles the following night as Sheffield came to the arena for one of the games of the season. Ed Courtney found Mike Ware sneaking into the slot with just four minutes on the clock. And he found the net to put Steelers ahead. 
But a minute later, Darren Colborn picked out David St Pierre, and his quick hands deceived Greco to bring the home side level. Before the break, Eagles pressed hard on Sheffield's net. Sam Grillo fires towards goal. It broke to Sean Byron. And he put his side 2 1 up from close in. Into the second period, a couple of near things for Eagles early on. Looked as though the move could break down. Till that is, Mark Wolf takes control, makes some space, and picks his spot. 3 1. Steelers responded though, quick break out of defence, Cranston the carrier down the left, into the path of Nicky Chin, and his one-timer made it 3-2. The goal's coming thick and fast though, and this was a cracker. Dino Bauber advancing in goal, he fakes the shot, square to Rolfe, and he's got the tap in to make it 2 Steelers had a power play four minutes later though, and this shot from Ken Priestley found its way past the unsighted Dobson to make it 4-3. But the second period scoring wasn't over. Watch for a typical turn by Scott Young. Gives Sam Grillo the chance. Power play goal, and Eagles lead 5-3, going into the third. The man called Del Monte said yes as he netted this rebound early in the third. But Eagles held on for the 5-4 win to keep themselves among the early pace setters in the league table. Before the night was over, the clash of the heavyweights, Mike Ware fancied his chances with Joey Middlestat, but he soon learned the error of his ways and resorted to the bear hug to prevent further damage to his good looks. Eagles hit the road to open their Express Cup campaign with two away victories, 4-2 in Bracknell and then 7-4 in Cardiff. But then it was back to league business for a high-scoring and bad-tempered win over Bracknell. This classic one-timer from Scott Young put Eagles one up. Then Sean Byram's long reach allowed him to gather the puck and backhand one high over Mark Bernard's shoulder. He enjoyed that one against one of his old clubs. Brian Pellerin drifts in here though to make it 2-1. But before the period was up, Scott Young kept it in the B zone, fired for goal, and Mark Montanari got the touch there to send it into the top corner. Into the second period, a brilliant rink length skate ended in Scott Young beating Bernard on the near side. A vintage goal from the big man. And another cracker was to follow from Matt Hoffman. Feeling in at speed from the left wing to flick it home and put Eagles 5-1 up. Sandra Lowe made it six before this by Shane McCosh, pulled one back for Bracknell. And the Bees stung again through Wade Brooks's on a delayed penalty call before the second break to take the shine off Eagles early play. And when Dale Junkin stole this one just 24 seconds after the restart, to make it 6-4. The game was a contest again. Sammy measured up this one to make it 7-4 in the 47th minute. But this one had been bubbling under the surface for some time and Montanari and Pellerin were thrown out after this bout. Gloves were up again soon after, watch the far side here, just a minute later. Value for money bout here between Angelo Catanaro and Tom Gomes. At the end of that one, two more for the early shower. Eagles finished on a high though, Dennis Purdy firing Sean Byram's pass home to complete the scoring, 8-4 with 120 minutes in penalties, dished out by the ref. A 
3-1 Super League loss in Sheffield was followed by a 6-5 Express Cup win in Nottingham before Eagles lined up again in Centrum against Cardiff. Jim Lynch's men looking for the lead points and also still looking for their first ever win over Devils on Scottish ice. Disappointing opening for Eagles though as Shannon Hope opened the scoring. But this power play goal by Sean Byram after a crisp pass from Hoff tied it in the 12th minute. Ken Hodge, though, put Devils ahead before the break after Shannon Hope's effort had been blocked. And then straight after the restart, Sean Byram's quick hands in front of the net produced a memorable finish to make it 2-2. Devils went ahead again with this top-shelf effort from Ivan Machulik. But again, Eagles found the reply. Mark Montanari deflecting Joey Middlestat's drive past Frank Caprice. Nip and tuck up to this point. The Devils edged in front again a minute from the interval. Eagles defence failed to clear Kip Noble's initial shot. And Doug McCarthy eventually beats Rob Dobson. 4-3 then going into the third, but this uncharacteristic error behind the net by Ryan Kumu gave Steve Moria the chance, which he gratefully accepted. And the fans from the Valleys liked that one. A minute later and more poor defensive play let Ken Hodge in to make it 6-3. Ten minutes left, Mike McWilliam found a route down the left side to make it 7-3 and pile on the misery of the home crowd. Eagles did have the last word when Ryan Kumu ventured forward to net eight seconds from the end. Some consolation for the fans as Devils departed, no doubt optimistic of their chances in the big one a fortnight later. Eagles were by now firmly established as trailblazers in the Express Cup and Sheffield were to provide the opposition in Centrum's first look at the new competition. Steelers went ahead though after just 47 seconds. The air defence caught cold as Del Monte was able to beat Cavilla on Frank Kovac's pass and at 10.55 it was 2-0 to the visitors when two Eagles defencemen went sprawling here. It could have been any one of three Sheffield men closing in on Cavilla. In the end, Van der Horst struck it home. Then came probably the lowest point in Eagles' season. Matt Hoffman dumps the puck in the corner. Sean Byram plays it behind the goal to Dennis Purdy, and his Purds feels out front. Bang! The hit from Cody Bolio with Purdy obviously hurt the referee stops play. Eagles players furious with Bolio for that one. So are the fans and Dennis in agony on the ice. Let's zoom in on it in slow motion. You can make your own mind up on that one, legal or illegal. It was a hit that went unpunished and would ultimately deprive Dennis of a place in the Benson and Hedges Cup final and leave him with a long and painful battle to salvage something from his season. Matt Hoffman didn't like what had happened to his line mate and soon sought some retribution. Both he and Cory Bolio ejected from the game after this. inspired Eagles to battle back into this one and at 15.55 on the power play Dino Bauba makes it 2-1 
then this memorable effort from Alan Schuller, one of Eagles' best of the season, tied it at two apiece. Within 19 seconds, Jamie Steer had Hibbert beaten again, leaving Eagles 3-2 up at the end of the first session. Sandra Lowe showed that size doesn't matter as he holds his own against Big Ron Shudra in this one. And soon after, on the power play, Mark Wolf made finishing look easy as he skates away on this pass from Mark Montanari to put his side 4-2 ahead. Steelers rallied though and by the second break they were level. Kovacs deflected Cranston's shot home. And then in the dying seconds of the period, this near side blast from Nicky Chin beats Colum Cabilla to leave it level at four apiece going into the third. The final session was to see Eagles wrap it up. The vision of David St. Pierre sent John Parco clear for his first Eagles goal here. Caribiet then scored in the empty net with 61 seconds left on the clock. And then the icing on the cake came two seconds from time as Jamie Steer turned this one home to make it 7-4. Although I don't think even Jamie would claim to have known much about this one. It was a good performance by Eagles, but as the crowd left the arena, most thoughts were on Dennis Purdy rather than on the final result. I, I don't really remember much about it. Uh, I, was, I went into the corner and retrieved the puck, and uh, I was skating behind the net, and I wasn't really looking where I was going. And um, I heard Matt Hoffman yell, you know, watch out, Purds. And uh, so I tried to cut around the net really tight, and... Uh, Next thing I know, I was lying on the ice, holding my leg, and I didn't know whether it was broken or, or what. It was just very painful. Yeah, you looked to be in tremendous pain as you were stretchered away that night. Did you have any initial fears as to how bad the injury was going to be? I, I, I didn't really actually think it was that bad. You know, uh, it didn't feel very good, but you know, they were just saying it was a hematoma and, and uh, you know, just a bad bruise, and you know, it wouldn't take long. And then uh, after I got the X-rays, they didn't find any anything broken or anything. So. Uh, you know, I was, I was pretty excited about that, thinking, well, you know, maybe two or three weeks, <laughs> you know, not two or three months. What about the road to recovery, Dennis? What was the, the route back to fitness for you? Basically just uh, letting the bone heal, actually. Uh, you know, I did a lot of uh, swimming and riding the bike and just working out at the gym, you know, just to keep my, uh, just to keep in shape, you know, for when I was uh, ready to come back. Then, uh, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, two months behind everyone else. So uh, it was basically uh, just that. With a road trip to Bracknell and Basingstoke out of the way, thoughts could now turn to the Benson and Hedges Cup final. A massive support travelled south to Roro and Eagles, but they were pushed in the second period when Devils broke forward. Sacratini finds Doug McEwen to his left, and he makes no mistake. Goal timed at 31-20, and Eagles 1-0 down. Looking again, defence drawn to the puck. Veteran McEwen takes his chance. However, Eagles never looked out of it, and at 51-27, they got a thoroughly deserved equaliser. John Parco starts the move, Jamie Steer helps it to Mark Wolf, and Parco drifts in on the blind side. Looking here, Wolfie picks him out brilliantly, and the finish is first class. Caprice beaten, Parco's first goal of the competition, and what a time to claim it. The Cardiff goalie spreads himself well, but leaves a gap at the near post, and Eagles on level terms. As the clock ticked down, overtime began to look distinctly possible, but at 57-18, drama in Sheffield. Watch this one, Ryan Kumu involved. Jeff Hoad picks it up, shoots at goal as he falls, and the puck ends up behind Frank Caprice. Eagles take the lead. The fans can't believe it. Hoadie gets another big game goal, and the first trophy is within touching distance. 
Another look, watch the contribution here of Jamie Steer. He's the screener on the shot, preventing Caprice from getting a clear view. Works beautifully. Eagles hold on to the lead despite late penalty trouble. The fireworks signal the end of the game. Jim Lynch a happy man, and so is Jeff Hogue, the game-winning scorer. Eagles get to pick up the beautiful Benson Hedges Cup. It was a happy but long journey home, and it was an incredible turnout in Centrum the following night as over 2,000 fans turned out to a hastily arranged party to see the Benson and Hedges Cup brought back to air. Angelo Catanaro introduced the trophy to its new home and admitted that that first victory was something special. Yeah, it was special because it was the first one, uh, you know, for the Eagles and being here from the inception of, uh, of the team last year. It's uh, kind of special to get the first one out of the way, and especially after the heart, you know, heartbreak of the season before. Um, it was kind of good, uh, you know, to get some revenge. And again, it's early in the season, so I think uh, we quieted quite a few people down because I think a lot of people just picked us as a dark horse from the beginning of the year. So to win the first one sort of uh, made us made people realize that uh, we were for real. It can't be said that attitude is the only thing that wins trophies, Angelo, but within the walls of, of this dressing room, there is a tremendous spirit. Would you agree that that's got an awful lot to do with the success the team has achieved this year? Yeah, I think there's, uh, you have to put a lot of importance on the whole attitude and, and, and spirit of the dressing room. I think it goes a long way, uh, you know, sometimes maybe more so than, than talent. I don't think talent's going to win you hockey games, uh, game in and game out, but if you've got that never say die attitude and uh, sort of togetherness that we do have here, I think it carries uh, carries a long way. And you know, I think we've shown that all season. There's a really there's a genuine caring between the players, and uh, everyone uh, cares about what happens to each other on the ice, and it's shown. And it's something that you have to work at, and we have uh, we have done that this year. We really work at uh, creating that atmosphere. And uh, I, I think it's, it's, you can't put a price on it. You know, it's something that just, that just doesn't happen like that. And uh, you have to work at it, and we've done a good job. You've won honours before. I know Angelo elsewhere. But in terms of your career, how does this past season in, in air sit in your personal list of achievements? Well, it's, it's very high, uh, very high up there. I, I think to date, uh, this has to be probably the most successful by far uh, of, of my whole career. And it's been a long one. And uh, very satisfying in the fact that I'm having a lot of fun. And that's, uh, you know, I, the past two years for me have been very fun here. And that's brought a lot to my game. You know, I'm going out there and I'm enjoying the game. And uh, so that makes the winning so much more special. But, um, no, it's been, it's been unbelievable. And I hope I can, you know, it can be repeated. It's, that's, that's the only thing. You just, you get this, this far and you want more. You know, you really do want a lot more. And, you know, hopefully uh, I can achieve that again in my career. With the Sunday night party over, it was back to business the next night as Manchester came to Centrum on league business. The first goal came in the 29th minute when strong core checking by Ayr kept the puck in the zone. And when it was delivered goalwards from the right point, Jamie Steer was on hand to deflect past Jim Rivnack. Ryan Kumu dispossesses Rick Brabant here to set up the move which led to Eagles second. Racing down the wing, drops it to Jeff Hode. Square pass to Carrie Biet, and Sandra Lowe finishes the job. But it had been a long, hard weekend for the Cup winners, and Manchester would storm back in the third period. Brabant snatched this one on the power play to make it 2-1, before Chris Miller broke clear 11 minutes from time to find Dobber's top corner and take this one into overtime. But no more goals meant a share of the points. A successful run of away games followed with Basingstoke and Cardiff beaten in the league and a win in Manchester in the Express Cup put Eagles in the mood for the visit of the Bracknell Bees. Two power play goals sent air on their way, that first one coming from Sam Grillo after just four minutes. And a couple of minutes later this rocket from Mark Wolf made it two.
Dino Bauba does some great work here to set up Wolfie's second of the night. And Eagles lead by three at the first break. Scott Young steps out of the penalty box midway through the second period to make it 4-0 Eagles. And next, Mark Montanari's pass was driven past Mark Bernard by Dino Bauba to put the home side 5-0 up at the second break. With only four days to go until Christmas, Santa popped in to add his expertise to the ice preparation. No reindeer in sight. But Jamie Steer gladly accepts this gift-wrapped pass from John Parco to burst clear and plant this one behind Mark Bernard. 6-0 as the Christmas cheers ring round Centrum. After a 3-2 win in Newcastle had sent Eagles four points clear at the top of the Express Cup table, Manchester were the next opponents in the competition as they visited Centrum. Mark Wolfe keeps this one in the storm zone and had the vision to pick out Bauba at the back post, and Dino steps in to produce a top-class finish and put Eagles 1-0 up. Chris Miller equalised with this one at 10-18, little chance there for Colum Cavilla. And then a moment to forget for the Eagles' defence just 30 seconds on and Brabant presented with the chance to make it 2-1. The home side got their act together though before the break, Montanari netting two minutes from the interval to make it two apiece. Sean Byram produced a classy backhand finish to make it 3-2 Eagles midway through the second. This power play goal though from Brad Rubichuk levelled things once again. But Eagles were masters in this tournament, and this game was no different. Goals either side of the second break from Dino Bauba. Lovely finish. And then Jamie Steer with this devastating low shot tied up the points. 5-3, the final scoreline. Basingstoke Bison were Eagles' first footers in Centrum, but the visitors afforded little in the way of seasonal hospitality. Montanari was denied, but Mark Wolfe followed up to open the scoring after 1.38, and just 61 seconds later, it was two, when Jamie Steer again fed off a John Parco drop pass to beat Galacci. Into the second session, Ryan Kumu shoots just wide here, but Sean Byram sets John Parco up, 3-0. Bison get one back, Greg Gatto scoring here at the second attempt. But less than a minute later, Scott Young outwitted the Bison defence before picking his spot at the far post, 4-1. Before the period was over, Big Sean took this pass from Ryan Kumu brilliantly to step round the goaltender, 5-1, and Eagles cruising. Four minutes into the third, Mark Wolfe's power play blast made it six. And then this rink landscape down the left from Sammy ended with a clinical wrist shot which left Galacci bewildered. Bison did have the last word though when Paddy Scott netted after some confusion around the Eagles goal. But the 7-2 final result was a good night's work for Ayr as they hit the top of the Super League table. 
That position was strengthened by a 5-4 win in Sheffield to push Eagles three points clear before Cardiff came to air in the Express Cup. Remember, Eagles still looking for that elusive first win over the Welshman on home ice. Not the best start by Eagles as an Ian Cooper goal beat Colin Cavilla to make it 1-0 to the visitors, but Eagles levelled before the break after some Scott Young brilliance gave Harry Biet the chance to beat Derek Herlovsky. The Centrum crowd loved it when Eagles took the lead through this power play goal from Sam Grillo early in the second period. Shannon Hope was left unmarked at the near post though as he made it to a piece late in the second period. The Eagles defence was drawn to the puck carrier here as McIntyre crept over to the far post. Watch him sneak across here. No mistake from him when Steve Thornton picked him out. Eagles frustrated as they suffered their first defeat in the Express Cup qualifying. With Frank Evans and Mark Montanari tangling here before the end. Eagles were two points clear in the Express Cup when Nottingham in second place came to air and Eagles lead at the top would be wider before the night was out. A low scoring game, a shutout for Colin Cavilla. It was 1-0 at 14-04 on the power play. The familiar tactic with Mark Wolf hanging back on the blue line. Working well again. Scott O'Connor beaten, all ends up. Less than two minutes later, John Parker reacted quickly to the break of the puck in front of goal. Final score, 2-0 Eagles. The next night, Centrum was packed out as second place Cardiff came to air for a vital Super League battle. Tension was high before the face-off, and as the teams went hard at it in the opening shifts, we had trouble inside the first minute. Eagles forced the puck into the Devils' zone. Much for John Parko being felled by Brent Pope. He didn't like that one. Neither does Sean Byram here. And soon he and Ian McIntyre were going for it over by the boards. An electric start as these guys blew a fuse. Disaster for Eagles though in the eighth minute. Watch Ivan Machilik here as he skates from the penalty box to latch on to this iced puck. He scores. But later in the period, Sean Byram brought the sides level. How many times have we seen him pull off that backhand finish? Classy stuff from the ex NHLer. Into the second period and on this power play. Crisp passing in front by Sam Grillo. Watch for that. And an equally sharp finish by Dino Bauber. Beats Herlovsky. Eagles take the lead. And the on-form Dino Bauer produced one of the most memorable goals of the year to put Air 3-1 up. Watch for him dispossessing the Cardiff player here in the far corner. Skates all the way down the right wing. Montanari's the decoy, but Dino produces an excellent finish. Eagles in the driving seat and believing that the longed-for win over the Welsh could be on. Less than a minute later though, Doug McEwen's shot here trickles agonisingly over the line to leave Eagles with a precarious one-goal lead going into the third period. But look at this, early in the session, collision between Matulik and Hope, Sammy picks it up, 1-2 with Dino, 4-2 and the point's sewn up. The fans loved that one, a big result psychologically and a big milestone in Eagles' bid for the Super League title. Three days later, Eagles at home again, Basingstoke visiting on Express Cup business. There's Sean Byram picking up the pieces close in. 
another trademark finish 1-0 after the first period and a power play goal by Jamie Steer five minutes into the second doubled the home side's advantage Next, Steersy grabs hold of this rebound to net his second of the night. And soon after, Mark Montanari sets up Dino Bauba to make it a final score of 4-0. Another great night for Colum Cavilla. After an Express Cup overtime loss in Sheffield, Jim Lynch's men returned to Super League business and it was to be a strange old night in Centrum as third place Nottingham came to call. Eagles were in devastating form early on, Carrie Biet nets here after a great skate down the right wing. And the Wolfie power play move worked perfectly again when his blue liner was turned past Robbins here by Matt Hoffman. Eagles make it two. Quick thinking close in by Carrie Biet here makes it 3 0. And Jamie Steer eventually takes control of things on this play to make it four at the first break. Into the second period. David Saint-Pierre's shot from the right was drifting wide when Jeff Hode tapped it in to make it 5-0. And when this one from Sam Grillo finds the top corner to make it 6, that was enough for Trevor Robbins. He skated off in disgust. On the slow motion here, you can see the accuracy of Sammy's blast. Straight into the top of the net. O'Connor was now in goal, but he couldn't prevent Mark Will from making it seven with this neat touch in front. John Byram makes it eight with this one on the delayed penalty call to pile on the embarrassment for Mike Blaisdell's mob. Panthers just had no answer, remember this? The equivalent of the white flag from the visitors, constantly killing the play. Icing the puck, much to the disgust of both sets of fans in the building. Ironically, it was after a warning from the ref that they eventually broke Dobson's shutout, Nienhuis scoring in the closing stages, but it was Eagles' night, and the Super League title was looking more and more like a reality. When Bracknell came to Centrum three days later in the Express Cup, the result was fairly academic for Ayr as they couldn't lose top spot in the table, but the home side kept their form going with a solid win. This lovely work by Grillo opened the scoring at 8-0-4. And San Pierre and Hoffman combined effectively here as Big Matt rattled this one past Greer to make it two. The Bees pulled one back when Joe Ferracchioli found Dave Whistle out front. No chance for Colum there, but it was to be all Eagles from there on in. Jamie Steer unlucky initially in this move. But when David Saint-Pierre picked up the puck, Steersy was on hand to get reward for his early effort. 3-1 at the first break. Watch for Sean Byram here driving to the net after 28 minutes to make it 4-1. And Ryan Kumu drifted into the slot to pick up a pass from Mark Montanari.
5-1 going into the third. Brian Greer gets in a tangle here as Matt Hoffman fires across goal. And Kari Bietz on hand to knock it home. Thank you very much. Party time in the stands, but it wasn't over yet. Alan Schuller's pass here sends Mark Wolf clear. And look at the accuracy of the wrist shot. Superb as Eagles come out 7-1 winners. A home match with Newcastle would complete Eagles Express Cup qualifying fixtures. And the big news was that Dennis Purdy would make his comeback after 24 games out. This was the sight Eagles fans wanted to see. It was a smile that said it all. We waited 17 minutes for the first goal in this Express Cup time. It was the visitors first on the mark. Duberman tucking his own rebound home for 1-0. Before the break, though, it was level. Look at the patient build-up here. Eventually, Mark Montanari takes on the responsibility. Watch him make the space for the shot here. And it's all square at the first break. Midway through the middle period, Eagles went 2-1 up on the power play. The Wolf shot from the blue line again. Everyone but Montanari loses sight of it. Not much to shoot at from that angle, but no mistake, Montanari's second of the night. Two minutes later, it was 3-1 as Sam Grillo sets up Wolf for the tap-in here. Five minutes after the break came Wolfie second and Eagles fourth. Again, good possession from the home side. And when Sandra Lowe delivers the final pass, Wolfie's finish was neat. Centrum side moving nicely now, and 59 seconds later came goal number five and Mark Montanari's hat trick. Brulot unlucky initially. Vince Bo picks out Mons at the back post. 5 1. The pressure stayed on Cobras as Eagles got their third goal in the space of just 100 seconds. It came on the power play. At the end of this move, watch for Vince Bo driving towards goal. And Jamie Steer in the right place to divert it past Foster. 6 1 the final score. Sandra Lowe's record five assists helped him pick up the Man of the Match award. And he received the customary pounding from his buddies. A bonus for Eagles was that Dennis Purdy came through without reaction to his injury, although Dennis admits he was pretty nervous before his comeback game. It was uh, it was funny, you know, uh, that night I couldn't sleep during the day and, uh, you know, I was really excited for the game and, um, yeah, it was, every time I would go to a doctor, you know, they'd tell me something different and, and uh, I, I really didn't know what was going on or what to believe and, you know, uh, they started saying, you know, three months, four months, a season, you know, two weeks, you know, I, I, I didn't really know what to think and uh, I was just really excited about that day and uh, happy it came when it did. That night when you came back against the Cobras here in the Express Cup, you didn't get on the score sheet, although I think everybody in the building was, was wishing a goal for you that night. But it must have been a great feeling nonetheless to come through that one and know that your season was starting all over again. Yeah, it, w it was very exciting. You know, I was, uh, I was really nervous. You know, I was kind of afraid to hit, and you know, the fans are all yelling my name and stuff like that. And uh, I, I wanted to hit, but I was just too afraid because you know, I didn't know what was, uh, was supposed to happen because I wasn't even supposed to be playing yet. And um, yeah, it would have been nice to get a goal. That's just like starting a new season over, you know. Uh, your first goal is always the hardest one to get, so uh, it would have been nice to get one that night, but uh, they came shortly after. A 5-2 away win in Nottingham set up Eagles' first track at the Super League title as Manchester travelled to Centrum. An air of anticipation in the arena with Eagles on the brink, but a setback after 10 minutes. Dobson well screened there by Riverchuck as Craig Woodcroft's shot sneaks home. It was a tense affair for both teams. Remember, Manchester had to win to keep their slim hopes alive, and it was no surprise when things got nasty before the first break. Montanari and Stefan Catola each taking two plus tens after this one. The 
injured Jeff Hoad had been a last minute call up for this one as Eagles David St Pierre retired after the warm up with a cracked rib. Hoad joined the fray in the second and with his first touch of the puck brought Jim Lynch's side level. Then just as overtime looked a certainty with just 39 seconds left in the game, Eagles lost possession, Riberchuk skates clear, Dobson saved, but Woodcroft scores on the rebound. Manchester naturally overjoyed at that one. Their fans keep the interest going for another week and the Centrum Champers is put back in the cooler. After a midweek trip to Nottingham where Eagles fought out a four-all tie in the first leg of the Express Cup semi-final, it was back to Centrum in the second bite at the league title. The building was packed and expectations high as bottom club Newcastle provided the opposition. Cobras frustrated Eagles for two periods but early in the third the crucial opener. Grillo the carrier, he gets tied up but look at the shot in the turn from Dennis Purdy. What a moment for him, he loved that. And so did the Centrum fans, the capacity crowd on their feet and sensing the glory. From another angle, Mark McCoy stops Sam Grillo in his tracks here, but a brilliantly conceived shot on the backhand from Purdy and Cowley beaten at last. The quick reactions of Dennis Purdy catching out the Cobras goaltender and a more popular scorer you could not imagine. The icing on the cake in the dying seconds, goaltender pulled. Matt Hoffman does well to centre to who else? Dennis Purdy, he fires home and the title is sewn up for sure. Delight on the bench as this one comes to an end and great celebrations all round the arena. Provost Robert Campbell does the honours presenting the Super League trophy to Angelo Catanaro, to the roars of the Scots fans. Two in a row, that's the message from the delighted Eagles. And the champagne corks definitely popping now. Not even Chairman Bill Barr escapes the champagne shower outside an exuberant Eagles dressing room. no words for it you know it was a hard game uh, they played really well you know and uh, we kept fighting we knew we were gonna get our chances sooner or later Wayne Cowley played an unbelievable game so you know we didn't take them too lightly which is I think a lot of other teams might have done and it just feels great you know, I can't say too much about it it's uh, this is what you, you play hockey for you know it's not just this one night I mean we've watched other teams and listened to other teams complain about their injuries and their whining and everything well, we, we've had just as many and Guys here, guys here have adjusted all different positions and everything, and we, I think we did what it took to win the league championship. I'm just pleased for everybody. It was a, a long spell out for you through injury. Did you think at some points that you might never make it to a night like this this season? Every time I would go to the doctor, they'd tell me a couple more months. <laughs> so I, I was getting a little frustrated there, but uh, I'm happy to be back playing. So far, we've seen lots of goals, but a big part of the team's success was the puck stoppers at the other end. Colm Cavilla and Player of the Year Rob Dobson have been instrumental in the capture of honours.
Eagles club voted overwhelmingly for Rob Dobson as their player of the year, but the fans hero was keen to play down his contribution. Yeah, I think I've been pretty lucky, you know, I've got a tremendous group of guys who've played in front of me, they've made my job pretty easy all season and, you know, to be able to come over here and achieve what we've achieved is a tremendous goal for anybody and uh, we've been very fortunate to stay away from key injuries and I think that all together has made my job a pretty easy one in between these pipes. You play a very stand-up kind of game and to me your great strength is playing your angles and not giving guys space to, to shoot at the net. Has that always been your style or is that another thing that comes around with experience? Well, I think it's come with experience. Earlier in my career I had a tendency to get deep in my net and go down a little too early and I think I've been able over the last few years to learn to react to the puck a little bit more and I, I think most importantly is my size. If I'm back in the net, anybody who plays back in the net, isn't their size isn't going to be an asset and for me if I can get out to the top of the crease it, it helps me a lot of times when I'm out of position because the puck just may hit me. So. I think that's something I've learned over the course of my career is to be a little more stand up and kind of react to the play a little more and not so much panic but to be a little more confident in here. When you agreed to come here last summer it must have been a bit of a, a step into the unknown for you Rob. Is it a decision that's been vindicated? Have you enjoyed your, your first year here? I think it's probably the best decision I've made in hockey. I looked to all the ones that I've made, some good, some bad. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to play the game I love again and to play on a constant level. You know, last year was a disappointing year for myself. I didn't get to play as much as I had become accustomed. So the decision here was really one where I, it wasn't that hard to make. I was given the opportunity to come in and play, and that's always been my strength, this, this sort of workhorse mentality. I enjoy playing every game. I kind of get a little disappointed to sit on the bench. So last year was a kind of an eye-opener for me, but it made me appreciate the game more, and I think when I came over here, I came over as a confident player, just looking to be able to play the game again. I think things worked out tremendously for everybody. After the euphoria, Eagles turned their attention back to the Express Cup as Nottingham travelled north for the second leg. All square remember after a tight away win for Eagles, but this is to be a different story. Panthers get off to a great start there, Leach blasting past Colin Cavilla. But take a look at this Eagles equaliser. Dennis Purdy picks it up behind his own goal line. Waltzes through the Panthers' defence to the other end. Slides it home. Sheer brilliance. One apiece. Scott Young finds the gap between Scott O'Connor's pads soon after to put Eagles ahead. But Italian Olympian Mike DeAngelis ties it up with this power play strike at 16.07. This power play move by Eagles appeared to have broken down. But Sean Byram recovers brilliantly to whip the puck home and leave it 3-2 at the first break. After the interval, Carey Biet intercepted on his own blue line to skate clear. No mistake from him. 4-2. That one shot-handed. And Carey carried on the good work, forcing this one home to make it five. Sean Byram gets taken out of the play here, but John Park was following up to make it 6-2. And then Ryan Kumu steps in, breaks up this move, and sends Sam Grillo clear. And at the second attempt, he gets Eagle 7. After the break, Garth Primack gives Panthers a glimmer of hope. 7-3. But Sean Byram beats Scott O'Connor from distance here to restore Eagles' five-goal advantage. Big Sean denied his hat-trick seconds later, but in the same shift he gets another chance. Great night for Baizy, misery for O'Connor though, and he's pulled in favour of on-loan air lad Peter Russell. The fans can feel another cup final coming, time to practice with the pom-poms. Nottingham restored some pride though with this shot-hander from Greg Haddon. But it was a devastating goal-scoring display by Eagles, perseverance by Young was rewarded. As he makes it 
10-4. And look at the power and accuracy in this finish. Mark Wolf from a tight angle. Panthers simply outclassed. The misery for the visitors complete as Russell makes this error. Hoffman tall enough to grab this clearance. Carrie Billette's hat-trick goal makes it 12-4 and Eagles breeze through to the Express Cup final on a 16-8 aggregate scoreline where they would face the Bracknell Bees. Good night for yourself. Three goals, your first hat-trick here in Central. Yeah, it was nice. You know, it's always nice to get a few. But I think in the playoffs here, we got to pull together and uh, just, just play to get the two points, the win, and then keep moving on. But it, it was nice. I mean, the boys were unbelievable. Really, you know, not much to do back there at all. And, and yeah, I, it was tough to keep the concentration, as was evident with a couple of mistakes there. But, you know, we played well enough that we got what we came for, and that was the win. So Forwards played a very good game tonight after the first break. With the Super League trophy already on the sideboard, Eagles wrapped up their league campaign with a home fixture against Sheffield. Anyway, Steelers keen to get a psychological advantage on Eagles going into the playoffs, and they made a good start here. Good skate by Ken Priestley. He does get the break late in the move, but takes his chance well. 1-0. Pivot all over the place here as Hoffman hits the post, but Hoff stays deep in the zone. As Catanaro delivers the puck from the left point, Hoffs on hand to turn home the equaliser. Sheffield respond though and before the period was over, Priestley found Kovacs closing in on the net. Dobson beaten 2-1. Into the second and Mark Montanari shows his value around the net. Watch him here as Kumu turns and shoots. Montanari turns it home, 2 all. Then in the 31st minute, the winning goal. Look at the cheeky pass from Sandra Lowe here. Sends Mark Wolfe down the left. And when Sam's shot is saved, who's there to tuck it home? Who else? Mark Montanari, his second of the night. 3-2 Eagles. And the champions complete their Super League schedule in style. Eagles had the bulk of the support in Newcastle for the Express Cup final as they went all out to claim the treble, but no one could have predicted the dream start that Eagles would make in this one against the Bees. Watch here, Sean Byram's dumped it into the corner. Pellerin tried the clearance, but only as far as Joe Middlestat. He let fly the sheer power of deceiving Mark Bernard and Eagles ahead after just 36 seconds. What a time for the big man to score his first goal for the club. Look at it again. Even though it didn't sit flat, Joey still gets power and accuracy through the puck. Bernard disgusted with the outcome of that one. Before the break, it was 2-0. Again, the dump to the left corner. The Bees defence moving away from Sam Grillo just for an instant here. Mark Wolf wrong foots them and sets Sammy away and what a great finish on the power play. The Tappan Army happy with that one. Look in slow motion here, Sam very direct, he knows where he's going and finds the gap between the pads of Mark Bernard. A great Grollo goal and another was to follow soon after the break. Poor understanding here between Stewart and Cote, Sammy outstrips both of them, skips over Stewart and dipsy doodles round Bernard, brilliant stuff and Eagles coasting at 3-0, Sam's second of the game. Look again as the airman outstrips two defencemen. They've both got a big start, but neither seems to take responsibility. And you can't let chances like that go to a man like Sam. Lovely finish. And from inside the net, little chance for the goaltender. 
Eagles should have been home and dry, but to their credit, Bracknell kept plugging, and before the period was out, they pulled two goals back. Sharp finish here to make it 3-1. Chris Grant setting it into the path of Joe Ferraculli, and he gave Colin Cavilla no chance. A big lift there for the southern side. And when Jeff Johnston found space for the shot in the 39th minute, Colm could only block, and Greg Burke fires home the rebound to make it 3-2 and set up a nerve-jangling final period. There were no further goals despite some anxious moments in the closing stages. And a thrilled Colm Cavilla leads the celebrations as the final hooter sounds. A wonderful and fitting gesture here as Captain Catanaro calls Cavilla forward to share in lifting the trophy. And give us another great sight. A triumphant Eagles side gripped around another piece of silverware. Three trophies in the cabinet with the playoffs still to come. So there we have it, a season to remember, in fact a season we will probably never forget. We hope you enjoyed reliving some of the best moments with us once again and look forward to seeing you back in Centrum next season when once again the Scottish Eagles will be flying high.